I don't have a problem, you have a problem. Hello and welcome to another video. My name is Heather and as always, I'm reading with a vengeance and as always, I hope you are as well. Today is a super exciting day for me. I, so I know you guys are in the future. I will probably not post this until tomorrow, but Today, today for me, is the day that the shortlist for the Women's Prize for Fiction has been announced. Now, it was announced, what time is it right now? I think it's almost 10 o'clock a.m. my time, Eastern Standard Time in the United States. And I believe, for me, the shortlist was announced at 4 a.m. this morning. So that is six hours of me avoiding everything. The TV, the phone, the computer, all social media, all news outlets, my email, because I'm pretty sure I subscribe to the Women's Prize for Fiction newsletter. So that's in my email right now. And it has been a long six hours because of course I've had things to do this morning. I take care of my dogs first thing in the morning. I volunteer at the senior center. I mean, I just make their coffee, but still I'm there for about an hour. Um, and then of course I come home and make myself somewhat presentable for video. And all I can really think about is what is the short list? I'm sure you've probably I'm sure there's already videos out there, but I just thought it would be fun, mostly for me, not gonna lie, <laughs> but I hope I hope you enjoy it too, but I'm going to do a, a reaction to the shortlist. You're gonna see my live reactions, uh, well not live, but you're gonna see the reactions as it happens here on this video. So I'm about to open my computer and do that. I did a video, um, basically it was a celebrating women video, but I included my experience with the Women's Prize for Fiction kind of retroactively. I only started following the Women's Prize for Fiction. I mean, following it, really following it this year, but I discovered it last year. Um, and so when it all came out this year, I decided to really follow it. And anyways, I did a video uh, and I talked about how I wanted to, I wasn't gonna read every book on the long list. I mean, there's 16 books. That's a lot to read in the, po in the amount of time they give you. But I decided to cherry pick some of the books that I was really interested in reading. And I think there were like six that I had an interest in reading. And as a matter of fact, the more videos I've watched and other people's reactions and reviews to the, the books from the long list, that list has kind of grown, so I'll probably end up reading a lot more. There were probably six or so that I definitely wanted to read by the time the short list came out. Now I do want to read every book that's on the short list. Hopefully I've already read one or two, ideally, but whatever comes out on the short list, I do want to read them all. And I kind of want to get my pr prediction on what the win winner's gonna be. So as far as reading the books that I wanted to read uh, before the short list came out, massive, fail <laughs> because I was hoping to get the books from the library, uh, but there was only maybe three in my local library that were available. And I don't wanna buy any more books, not right now. I'm not on a bu book buying ban per se, but I don't wanna add to my personal library right now. Um, I did end up buying two of the books uh, on Kindle because they were on sale. I got them each. Uh, I think I got Salt Lick and uh, the Bread the Devil Need um, for like $3 each. Couldn't resist, right? And it doesn't take up any space. Oh, and another uh, obstacle in reading uh, more from the long list, Maggie Shipstead, I, I hold personally responsible because she wrote a book that was just massive. It was almost 700 pages long and it, and it took me a minute. So <laughs> I hold her responsible. Not really, but I read Great Circle. I've read The Sentence, The Final Revival of Opal and Nev, Sorrow and Bliss, and right now I'm halfway through, maybe 40% through the Bread the Devil Need. And then of course Salt Lake's gonna be next because I have it. So that's what, four, five, six, six that I actually have. So we'll see which one of those books are on the short list. Whatever I haven't read that's on the short list will be on my TBR, obviously for May. So here's another failure story for you. I did my very first TBR video for my booktube, for my channel, um, and that was a massive fail as well, massive fail. <laughs> um, I think I talked about it in the video. I don't usually set 
a TBR for the month. I'm a mood reader. You know, the books that I feel like I have to read are my is my book club for my personal book club book. Uh, if I'm doing any readathons, which I am, I'm doing one kind of, I, you know, what's the difference between read readathon and reading challenge? I don't know. I'll figure it out. A reading challenge. Uh, Chantel over at Chantel reads all day. Uh, I've talked about this before. She's doing a year long challenge and each month there's a prompt. Um, so I want to get that book done uh, each month. And then I'm joining a readathon. Gemma, Gemma from Gemma Books is doing a readathon. She's got two other hosts, I believe Danny. Her channel is escaping. I'll link it all below. Uh, and I can't re remember that there's a third host. Ah. They're doing a tutor along where they're reading the Six Queens series. Since I'm talking about a TBR, what's the name of it? The read along Gemma of Gemma Books is doing is hosting it with Danny uh, at Danny's Book World and, and Emily at Novel Novels. So they're reading the Six Tutor Queens series. The first book we're starting in May, and that is Catherine of Aragon, The True Queen. So I'll be reading that as well. Um, but I'll, I'll talk more about that when I talk about my actual TBR after I talk about the shortlist. Oh my God, can we get to it? All right, so here we go. Okay, shortlist, here we go. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I knew it, I knew it. Okay, so the first uh, on the shortlist is Great Circle by Maggie Shipstead, and I read it, yay. And I knew it was gonna be on there. Uh, it is it is beautifully written. I talk about it, I can't remember, in one of my videos. I found it was a little too long. The woman knows how to write and uh, the story was great. I really enjoyed the premise of it, the story, how it was told. Um, I won't go too much into detail because by now you've either watched my video or a bunch of other videos about this particular book. Um, but it follows two storylines, uh, one's in the present, one's in the past. The one in the past, thankfully, the, most of the book follows that storyline, thankfully, because I didn't really care too much about the present day storyline. But yes, I, I kind of knew that this one was going to be, make the short, well, I guessed that this was gonna make the short list. So yay, uh, one of the books on the short list I've read, eee, when I thought this was gonna be a video of massive failures, but one win is good. The second book on the short list is uh, The Island of Missing Trees by Alif Shafak. I'm super excited about this one because I didn't get to it, obviously, uh, but I wanna read it. And it wasn't on my original, original list of books that I absolutely wanted to get to from the long list, but the more I've heard about it, the more it does intrigue me. So yay, I will definitely be reading that next month or for May. Third book on the shortlist is Sorrow and Bliss by Meg Mason. I have read this, yay. How did I feel about it? I talked about it in one of my wrap ups. I thought it was well written. I It was a little sad and depressing and well, a little heavy on the sorrow, not so much on the bliss. I thought it was a really good exploration into mental health. Yeah, I'm, am I surprised? I kinda am surprised at this one. I mean, and I say that ha having only read four and a half out of the 16 on the long list, but I don't know. The writing was good, obviously. I, mm, mm. anyways, let's get, let's move on. Number four on the short list is The Bread the Devil Need. So yay, I am not surprised because of just what I've heard other people review. Everybody's really loving this book. So far, I'm really enjoying this book. I'm really enjoying the writing. I'm really enjoying the story. Um, like I said, I'm only about 40% into it and I am really enjoying it. So yeah, oh, and this one's by Lisa Allen Agostini. But yay for her. I'm excited about this one being on the short list. Number five on the shortlist is The Sentence by Louise Erdrich. How do I feel about this one? So I had mixed emotions on this book. I was super excited. This one was on my original, original list, uh, as opposed to the just one original list. Anyway, this was on my original list to read because uh, I really enjoyed the premise. It, re it talked about basically a bookstore being haunted by one of the annoying bookstore customers who had died. And it also, this all happened during the pandemic. There was a lot more going on in this book as far as the pandemic, uh, about the the racism uh, that had just gone rampant in that first year of the pandemic with uh, George Floyd. 
It talks a lot about the uh, indigenous folks up in, I wanna say Michigan area. And the writing was a little tough for me. I had a little bit of a hard time. It, it didn't flow well for me. There was a lot of humor in it, which I, I enjoyed. I am not surprised that this one has hit the short list because the writing was stellar. But I have to say, I am glad that I've already read this one. And finally, number six on the short list for the Women's Prize for Fiction is The Book of Form and Emptiness by Ruth Ozeki. I am excited about this one. This did not make my original, original list of books to read. I've heard a lot of people are really enjoying it. I think there's been a lot of differing opinions on this one. I personally am excited that this one made the short list just, just because I haven't read uh, Ruth Ozeki yet. So yeah, there's the short list for the Women's Prize for Fiction. How exciting! I've read one, two, three, four, four of the six. So moving on to my TBR for May, I will be reading The Book of Form and Emptiness by Ruth Ozeki and The Island of Missing Trees by Alif Shafak. I also have not read Alif Shafak, so I'm excited about that one as well. So those are my first two books on my TBR list. What else am I reading for May? Uh, so let's move on to that. I will be reading, of course, the first book in the Tudor series by Alison Weir. I'll be reading Catherine uh, Catherine Aragon, The True Queen, um, for that readathon. I had mentioned Chantel Reads All Day, her year long book challenge. Uh, the prompt for May is oh, read a new to you author. Well, that's going to be easy because I haven't read Alif Shafak and I haven't read Ruth Ozeki. One of those will fit that prompt. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. I also mentioned earlier in this video that my TBR that I set for myself for April was a massive fail. For whatever reason, I just couldn't get through those books. I was on a massive race to, to get through as many of the long list books that I could. And I just, I, for whatever reason, I couldn't do it. You know, one of the things that I have going on right now that I haven't really talked about for the past two years, more than two years, uh, I've been trying to get certified as a yoga instructor. And so uh, it's all on Zoom now, of course. I have the class four times in a month. And so that's about 12 hours a month that I'm going to this class and then I have homework and then I'm trying to prepare for my practical. So I'm trying to put a, a one hour long practice together and I'm trying to study for the final. Um, so that's been taking a lot of my time. And there's also books I have to read for that as well. And it's very difficult for me to sit down with yoga books when all I want to do is read all of this. So that's kind of been slowing me down. Excuses, excuses. What can I say? But I'm here to share with you <laughs> some more hopefuls. These are hopefuls. This is not a set TBR. Some of them I've talked to you about, uh, about before. Uh, the first two are library books that I have out that I absolutely refuse to return until I read them. So um, this one, of course, I've been banging on, on, on and on about. Um, the Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. I'm really loving her stuff. I've gone on and on about the uh, A Psalm for the Wild Built. If you've watched some of my videos before, you know I blather and blather about her and that book. Yes, I've been trying to get to this for a while. Um, this is science fiction. I'll just read the blurb for you. When Rosemary Harper joins the crew of the Wayfair, she isn't expecting much. The patched up ship has seen better days, but it offers her everything she could possibly want, a spot to call home, a change to a chance to explore the far off corners of the galaxy and some distance from her past. And nothing could be further from what she's known than the crew of the Wayfarer. From Sissix, the exotic reptilian pilot, to Kizzy and Jenks, the chatty engineers who keep the ship running, to the noble Captain Ashby, life aboard is chaotic and crazy, exactly what Rosemary wants. That is, until the crew is offered the job of a lifetime. Tunneling wormholes through space to a distant planet. Sure, they'll, learn, they'll earn enough money to live comfortably for years, but risking her life wasn't part of the job description. The journey through the galaxy is full of excitement, adventure, and mishaps for the Wayfarer team. And along the way, Rosemary comes to realize that a crew is a family and that family isn't necessarily the worst thing in the universe, as long as you actually like them. Uh, while I've been wanting to read this for a while, I watched a booktuber, um, I watched a booktube video recently. Who was it? Who was it? 
gosh, I can't remember who it was, but she went and talked about this. She was doing, I believe, a tag where the question was, an, uh, you know, what what's a book you recommend that has an interesting friendship? Gosh darn, it's on the tip of my tongue. Um, and I can't remember, but she brought this book up and she just raved about how the friendships in this book is really what makes it a great book. Um, all the, the, the people on the Wayfarer ship, the different personality, the different characters and how they relate to each other. And the fact that they're all different, um, like species of like aliens and, uh, and humans and AI and, uh, hybrids of both and all that. Um, so she found that very fascinating. So I'm even more excited if that was even possible to read this book. Uh, the other book I believe that, uh, made it onto my list of hopefuls from last month's TBR is uh, A Spindle Splendor by Alex Harrow, Alex E. Harrow. And it's a little short guy, so I have no excuses to read, you know, not to read this book. And again, I refuse to return it until I read it. So it, this is a retelling, I believe, a Sleeping Beauty retelling. A Sleeping Beauty retelling, just real quick. Uh, it's Zinnia Gray's 21st birthday, which is extra special because it's the last birthday she'll ever have. When she was young, an industrial accident left Zinnia with a rare condition. Not much is known about her illness, just that no one has lived past 21. Her best friend, Charm, is intent on making Zinnia's last birthday special with the full Sleeping Beauty experience, complete with a tower and a spinning wheel. But when Zinnia pricks her finger, something strange and unexpected happens, and she finds herself falling through worlds with another Sleeping Beauty just as desperate to escape her fate. And I believe the second in this series has recently come out and, and I've seen some booktubers talk about it. I can't remember the name of it right now. I'll try to pop up the, the cover here. Um, so I will definitely be getting to a spindle splintered this month, allegedly. Okay, funny story on this next one. So I was watching Tia, I believe, Tia and the books. Tia and all the books, yes. And she mentioned a book think it was her and she mentioned a book and then she talked about and I think it was a book that she read for middle grade March uh and then same day I watched the woman at chapter and converse and then she brought up the same book now this is a book that I've never even heard of and then two booktubers that I watched in one day talked about this same book and then I went out to see, cause I saw that there was activity in my little free library. So I went out to see if there was anything good out there. And that book that they were talking about was in the library. So yes, I did take that book from my little library and I'll return it after I read it. But I think the universe was telling me to read it, right? So, and that book is The Westing Game uh, by Ellen Raskin. Uh, so yes, so the universe and a couple of booktubers are basically shouting at me to read this book. So I will, definitely get to this one. This one sounds really interesting. Um, a bizarre chain of events begins when 16 unlikely people gather for the reading of Samuel W. Westing's will. And though no one, God, and though no one knows why the eccentric game loving millionaire has chosen a, a virtual stranger and a possible murderer to inherit his vast fortune, one thing's for sure, Sam Westing may be dead, but that won't stop him from playing one last game. But yeah, strange, domino effect of events has led me to this book. So this is on my list of hopefuls for May. And then the last three books, I just kind of chose, like I said, I'm a mood reader. So I went through kind of my shelves to say, see what kind of pops out at me. I, I can't remember. Well, I have talked at least about one of them. So this was on my TBR for April and I just didn't get to it, but I abs I've been wanting to read this for months and months and I have no excuse. I feel like I'm one of the last five people on the planet uh, not to read it. It's just, and that's Know My Name by Chanel Miller. Um, I said her name wrong in the last video. What an idiot. Anyway, uh, this book needs no introduction. I'm sure if you're watching me, you've probably not only heard of this book, you've probably already read it. This is a memoir about her account of the sexual assault that she endured and then the absolute trauma that she endured afterward trying to get justice. Uh, and um, yes, so I don't want to make any promises, but I will make every effort to get to it. And these last two, I know I've mentioned this one before I've talked about. Uh, the next one is My Policeman by Beth Ann Roberts. This one came onto my radar because of my huge inappropriate crush on Harry Styles. He is doing the movie adaptation of this book. 
uh, and I found that out before I found out that it was a book. And of course, since I found out it was a book, I have to read it before I see it. I've never read anything by Beth Ann Roberts. I don't know how much of a backlist she has. Ah, the back. Soon to be a motion picture starring Harry Styles uh, and Emmer Corrin, an exquisitely told tragic tale of thwarted love. It's in 1950s Brighton that Marion first catches sight of Tom. He teaches her to swim, gently guiding her through the water in the shadow of the city's famous pier, and Marion is smitten, determined her love alone will be enough for them both. A few years later, Tom meets Patrick, a curator at the Brighton Museum. Patrick Patrick is besotted and opens Tom's eyes to a glamorous, sophisticated new world of art, travel, and beauty. Tom is their policeman, and in this age, it is safer for him to marry Marion and meet Patrick in secret. The two lovers must share him until one of them breaks and three lives are destroyed. So this is another new-to-me uh, author, so, so that'll fit my prompt from the reading challenge I talked about earlier. I feel like this one has a good chance of being consumed this month or in May. And finally, I picked this one because, of course, this one's on, been on my TBR for several months. A lot of people, this was a booktube darling um, for a while. And I picked it specifically for the month of May just because it's shorter and it would be easier to get through. Uh, but that is On Earth, We're Briefly Gorgeous by Ocean Wong. I don't think this one needs much of an introduction. However... Uh, this is a letter from a son to a mother who cannot read. Written when the speaker, Little Dog, is in his late 20s, the letter unearths a family's history that began before he was born, a history whose epicenter is rooted in Vietnam. At once a witness to the fraught yet undeniable love between a single mother and her son, it is also a brutally honest exploration of race, class, ma masculinity, and our current American moment, immersed as we are in addiction, violence, and trauma, but undergirded by compassion and tenderness. The question of how to survive and how to make it, how to make of it a kind of joy powers the most important debut novel of many years. So those are my hopefuls for May. I can tell you the absolute, oops, the absolute definites that will be uh, on my TBR for May are the shortlist uh, books, all two of them that I haven't read already. So since there are only two that I need to read from the shortlist, these these hopefuls have a little bit more of a chance than the books on my April TBR had. So we'll see how that goes. So what about you? Are you following the Women's Prize for Fiction? Uh, what did you think about the short list? Are you excited about them? Are you surprised? What do you think? I would love to hear what you think down below. Uh, in the comments, I read and respond to every single one of them. Uh, it's such a joy to hear from you. So whatever you want to comment down below, please feel free just to say hi. It makes my day. What about any other books that you have plans for May? Uh, it's spring is here. Summer is on the horizon. I'll the summer reads are going to be coming out soon so that's exciting if you are still watching please give that like button a boop and a subscribe that would really mean a lot to me thank you thank you thank you so much for watching i really appreciate you being here it's such a fun thing for me to do to sit here and talk about books and know that you're listening you have no idea how much joy that brings me and i will see you next time Bye bye